Tony from CassetteComeback.com. So in today's video, it's going to be a little bit of a mishmash. Uh, I've got three things I want to show you, and I didn't want to do a separate video, so we're just going to bundle them all together. So the first thing that I want to talk about is these. The switch boxes, you know, if you've got more than one tape deck, and you want to be able to put more tape decks into your amplifiers then. Radio Shack made these and they were a great little solution and indeed I've been using this one for a couple of years now and it does what it says on the tin. Absolutely brilliant little box, sounds great, works superb. But the only problem is that you can only put three decks on it. And if you've seen my sort of setup, I got more than three decks and I wanted to be able to put more and uh, I like that look of that. Simulated walnut grain finish. Oh, how early 80s, late 70s is this? But uh, yeah, you can only put three decks on this. And the thing is, I've got a modern amplifier which only has one tape loop, i.e. only one tape with a monitor loop. It's got one that you can just plug the cassette straight in, but you can't monitor them, i.e. listen to them while you're recording them. So I needed to find another solution. Now, there's a company called Shiny Bow that does some 4x4 matrices, even 8x8 matrices, but they seem to be only really available in the USA and they cost hundreds. I remember looking at about $400 if you can get hold of one and that wasn't a bit much. And then a fellow tape head called Alan Hood pointed me in the direction of this thing I'm going to show you now, which is what I actually ended up buying. So, what did I end up buying? I ended up buying this. The Sony Video Audio Selector SBV3000. Now, this really, more than anything, from what I can tell, it was sort of, um, let's use the word prosumer, sort of audio video matrix from, I think, looking at it, it dates from probably the late 80s. For people that had, you know, like a big AV setup before AV amps became a thing. And more than anything, uh, this is video based because all of the inputs, if you look at this picture here, bing, um, are not just audio, they're also composite video and S video. So this was never really designed to be used in the way I'm using it, but it can be. Now, I looked at the manual for this, and, I, and I'm one of those sort of, nah, I can figure this out, not manual kind of guys, but I give up and I had to actually look at the manual. But basically, this is how it works. It's got six inputs, six stereo inputs at the back, and basically these are represented on this matrix. So for example, I've plugged my Android tablet here, which is going through this little Behringer DAC. That goes into input six. So right now, this is input one, and this is input six. So basically, the Revox is on input one, the Dragon's on input two, the CR7's on input 3, the ZX9's on input 4, and the iWAS on input 5, and the, and the Android tablet's on input 6, but of course all the decks have got outputs as well. So, this here is saying that on input 6 I want to listen to it on 1, which is a Revox. So if I just play a tune now, we can see it's going in very hot. Ooh, let's turn that down a bit. Turn the input level down, but uh, but that's that's basically going in on deck one. So if I now look at um, deck two, which is a dragon, we can see there's no inputs there, nothing's happening. But however, if I go back to the matrix and go input six, I want to play it on deck two and select that as well. The dragon now comes to light. And likewise, if I put it on input three four and five, all the decks now have got the input six, which is the Android tablet going through them. So basically now I can make six copies at the same time, well sorry, five copies at the same time. Now the monitoring part, forget this bit because that's more for video, but I'm monitoring deck one here, so that is the Revox, I press that. I'm now monitoring the Dragon. I'm now monitoring the CR7. I'm now monitoring the ZX9. I'm now monitoring the Iowa. And six is I'm now monitoring the Source. 
So that's really good because I can do inputs and outputs and monitor any of the decks at once. What we can also do is if I stop this and I'm just going to play this tape and I'll talk about this tape later but I've got some multi few music on this. Now, this is being played from deck one. Yeah? So I'm monitoring deck one and that's what we're hearing. If I switch to deck two, we hear nothing. Why is that? Because these are all switched to six. So let's take it off six, go to one, and if I go to deck two, which is a dragon which sees nothing, if I press two now, there we go. So what essentially is happening now is the dragon is taking the input from the rebox and likewise I can do this on all the rest of the decks and they are now all taking the input from the rebox. So basically if I wanted to I could do five copies of whatever's being played in the rebox. And again I'm monitoring this on the dragon and then I can monitor it on all the other ones but that's the source. If I go to six there's nothing there because that's the Android tablet and uh, that's not taking an input. But if I go to five, it's the Iowa. And I go to two, uh, to one, sorry, that's back to the source. So that's essentially how I'm using this. I can record from any deck to any deck. Because example, on this deck, say I wanted to have the source is one. So say I wanted to record from the Revox to... CR7, that's what I'd press. Say the CR7, which is source 3, I wanted to record that to the Iowa, which is number 5. I'd press that. And obviously, monitor number 5. So it's a very, very flexible matrix. I mean, I know it's not designed for this because it's got all the AV stuff. And if you've got one of these, incidentally, there is auxiliaries here. And I'm pretty sure... I could use the auxiliary as an input source and then have six decks all connected to it rather than using the ins and outs of six as a source for external. If you can do that and you know how to do it, just drop me a message because I'd be really curious to know if I can do that and actually attach six decks. This is a PAL version because, you know, I'm in Europe, so uh, there we go. But I'm not using the video, so I don't see why it makes any difference if you're just using it for audio. But... I got this, it was for it was around £150 shipped, which for a really cool bit of Sony, you know, Sony when they were innovative and cutting edge, you know, unlike the Sony now that creates covers for MP3 players to make them look like cassette decks. Wow, bravo Sony. Uh, this was an innovative product, and uh, I can imagine this was quite expensive back in the day, so it seems to be well made. The only thing I've got, I don't know if you can tell, it's got a bit of power supply hum. But it doesn't seem to affect the audio on it. But uh, I think this is really great. Really great. And like I say, for the price you can get them for, if you can't get the shiny bow stuff, and it's still a lot cheaper than the shiny bow. So, uh, yeah. That was just something I wanted to show you in case it was something that you were interested in. So, I hope that was useful and, you know, gives you food for thought. The, the, I, I think there is some available in America. The European version is a bit harder to find, but... Uh, they well worth it. Like I say, it's really nice, easy way, especially if you've got a modern amplifier like mine, which only has a one tape loop. You know, if you've got some old one that's got three tape loops on it, then I'd be tempted to just get a couple of the realistic boxes and uh, do it that way. But anyway, let's go on to something else. Now, I'm going to look at some tapes today that are quite common in the UK and very reasonably priced. I don't think they are anywhere else, but... I want to do a little video on them anyway. And what are they? They are these. Sky Tapes. Now, if you didn't know, Sky is the satellite broadcasting arm of the Rupert Murdoch Empire. And it's the first, you know, English satellite company I can remember. I remember my dad getting a Sky Dish back in 91 and it opened my eyes to MTV and stuff and you know there's stuff like all oh, Sky movies where you know a young impressionable teen could watch stuff like Robocop and Death Wish 4 you know when the mum and dad weren't in <laughs> but anyway I digress so as a media company they started releasing media and uh, 
They did cassette tapes. They also did videotapes. I'm sure they did CDs as well, just with the Sky name on it, just a way to churn more money for their evil empire. But we've got the three generations of the Sky cassettes here. So this is the earliest one, the Ferric FX. And if we look at the back on this one, it says 1996 British Sky Broadcasting. A high-performance ferric in a high-precision cassette mechanism. So that's the earliest one from 96. And then we've got this one, which has a, a changed and updated Sky logo on it. And this one, again, 2000 British Sky Broadcasting. And then we have the last one, which is 2002 British Sky Broadcasting by Gemini Products Limited. Now, as far as I'm aware... These are actually all Strand, and Strand made stuff like uh, the the Bush Bush tapes and the Alba tapes and stuff like that. But I could I could actually be wrong because from what I actually I was just scratch what I've just said about Strand. I'm not sure this. Uh, like I say this Gemini Products Limited could be more the thing. Um, yeah, scratch what I said about Strand. But anyway, these are quite common and cheap in the UK. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't want to look at all three of them because it would take a long video and it might uh, be a bit boring if they're all the same. So we'll just take the middle one out. We'll take the, the first one and the last one and we'll see what's changed in the six years between these manufacturers. So let's have a look at these. I mean, as you can see, the pretty cheap wrinkly sort of wrapper. And like I said, they're, they're all opaque and I think all opaque wrappers are because the actual tapes underneath change, so rather than confuse people in the shops, they just bang them in there. So, here we go. It's pretty much as generic as you can get. It's a very clear shell. Yeah, no particular writing on it. And, you know, it'll never change, it'll never happen. Whenever I sit down to do these videos, it never enters my head for a minute. I go, all right, I've got the cassettes, I've got the uh, card and the camcorder, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never remember the big, well, anyhow. Now, look at that. That, for a ferric, is a very, very dark tape. A very dark tape. Generic hubs, very dark tape, cheap shell. Hmm. Type zero, we think. Let's have a look at the 2002 version. Ooh, look at look at that! There we go. You see, this is what I have to deal with in this game. You see, I bought a load of these, and uh, this one I've opened. That's obviously been stored really badly. Ooh dear, and no, I, I don't care what any of you are going to say now about, oh, you can salvage it, you make it, no. That one goes straight in the bin. I'll be right back. See, that's the thing when you buy from me at cassettecomeback.com. I just got that batch in, so I'm going to go and rip them all open now and see if they're all the same, because I won't sell you tapes like that unless, you know, obviously I don't know it's like that. And if I do, you contact me. I'll sort you out. You don't get that on eBay. You don't get that on Gumtree. You know what I mean? So this is why, you know, so Dirty Tape Flipper, you guys don't know how many cassettes I have to throw away, which is money down the tubes because they're like that. You know what I mean? So anyway, this one is from a different batch, and I'm hoping this one has been stored better than the last one. Hmm. So, yeah, this is live video, and normally, you know, you could edit that out. And I just go, ah, oh, forget it, I'll go back to this tape. But I want you to see, you saw it live, how it can be in this game. So, you know, I'm not asking you to feel bad for me, but I'm just saying, I have to stand by my products. Right, thankfully, this one looks absolutely fine. Uh, my, in fact, it looks exactly the same. So even though there's six years between them, same hubs same shell is it the same looking very very dark tape no this looks to have a slightly different formulation that is let's get these out of the way so it can focus that is a nice deep shiny brown and that one is a black so we have two very different tape formulations here 
black tape like this in cheap cassettes normally makes me worried. Brown tape like that should be okay. So let's fire up a deck and let's have a see if these are any good or if they are max in quality. Okay, so I'm going to use a Dragon for this. I haven't used a Dragon for a while and I know you like to see me calibrate stuff. So let's go first with, this is the 2002 one, the later one, because this has got, let's see if we can get the broker, this has got the brown tape in it as opposed to the black of the 96 one. But let's pop it in the Dragon and bias it up. So tape, 120 microseconds and it's on. Type one. Okay, so let's have a look. Level. Okay, it's a little bit high on the level. But very stable, that's nice. Bias. The auto azimuth tune in, but other than that, uh, yeah. Just to give it a little tweak there, but other than that, yeah, it's uh, very stable on the bias. And let's just give it a little bit on the left channel for the level. Other than that, I'm happy. Okay, so I'm going to use a tune called Bravado from the YouTube audio library. I'm going to crank this down a bit. Let's, let's try it at about zero, because this could be type zero, and let's see if it gets any better. Okay, let's turn up a bit. Well, it's no Type 0, is it? Uh, yeah, that uh, recorded really well. Odd Peaks at plus 5 there. Yeah, that, that, that was a good performer. So, maybe they got better as it went along, because this, this still looks like re-slip videotape to me. But anyhow, let's see if we can calibrate it up first. That's usually the first sign. So this is the 1996 version. Okay, this is different from the other one, it needs more level on the left. Just a smidge, okay. Bias. Mm, it's not a million miles away from the other one. But at least it is in the boundaries of being able to be calibrated, unlike re-slip videotape. So it's not re-slip videotape as far as I can see, that's very stable. Ooh, we could have a goodie on here. This could be a super ferric. You never know, it could be cobalt doped. Right, let's play some music through it. And this one is also from the YouTube Audio Library. It's called Disco Funk. Okay, let's give it some level. Let's put 
push it a bit higher. Welly, welly, well. I need to charge more for these. Mmm. Well, I keep saying it, there's nothing more surprising than a surprise. This one, this is the one in the blue wrapper, the 2002. Well, that's a very, very decent Type 1. It's easily a match for a D, if not maybe just a tad better. I mean, it's taken a peaking at plus 5 there and it sounded really good. This one, not Type 0 or reslip videotape. Oh no, this is a genuine bona fide Cobalt Dope Super Ferric. This, you, you want to know sleeper cassette? This is a definition of a sleeper cassette looks plain from a brand that no one really knows i don't know what they were loading in this they must have been using the remnants of something they had knocking around which obviously ran out because they'd run out of it by the time this came along but this version in uh, this style of wrapper i'm gonna stick my neck out here and say that'll go toe to toe with an ad if not maybe even an ar that is very very impressive and i knew this i knew this were walking in i know these are great tapes i've done this video i've got to be honest because these don't sell they don't sell because people don't know them they don't know what they look like and they don't think they're any good and that's what i'm here for i'm here to say sky cassettes very very good i've tested this one some of these have this tape in some of these have this tape in you never know because it's in the middle but again very very decent so go out and get yourself some sky cassettes because like i say i mean you know we've got rtm coming out with their c90 fox which is going around everywhere i'm not going to review the c90 fox i don't particularly like rtm and i don't feel the need to give them any publicity since they're in it purely for the money they don't give anything back to the community nothing so uh i don't feel the need but what i'm saying is you're going to be able to get one of these for at least half the price of whatever they're going to charge for the C90 Fox, which will probably be about five euros for a C90. Get one of these instead, fantastic stuff. So the other thing just to show you while I put these away, you might have noticed it at the start of the video and I put a, a picture of it in my last uh, community post is this, the cassette comeback M60 Type 4 metal position cassette and someone said if only they existed well they do exist it's right here so what's the story behind this well i always figured that data tape was metal tape and that's still being made so if i could get a chinese manufacturer to tweak the bias point of a metal tape that's used for data and re-slit it then we'd have a bona fide new type 4 metal and that's not what I did in this case. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just pulling your leg. Metal, brand new ones, it ain't coming back, forget about it. What it is, somebody put me in contact with someone who had a load of duplicator type 4s that are completely plain and said, you know, are these any use to you? And I thought, yeah, and I tested the tape and I thought it was really good. In fact, you know, it's a bona fide type 4 shell, it's a Lenko shell, but eagle-eyed ones of you now are going, oh, oh, I recognise that. It looks to be exactly the same shell as on the realistic super tape. Look, Lenko shells, the A's, 
the arrows, the style, seem to be exactly the same shell. Now, the more astute of you will be going, oh, 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 I know what this is. It, 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 it. Yeah. Phoenix. Now, if you don't know about Phoenix, it was a company set up by a fellow tape head and he found a load of metal tape and a load of Lenko shells, put them together and came up with Phoenix. And it was before my re-emergence into the tape scene, so I never really chatted to the guy and unfortunately he's no longer with us. But, if we look at the Phoenix tape, same hubs, same shell. So, I don't really know the origins of where this tape that I'm, you know, these are homemade stickers and uh, homemade Jacob. I mean, you can see the Hewlett Packard logo on the back of the paper, but I've given it that anyway. But the bottom line is that all of these are really decent Type 4 metal tapes, and you know, it records really well. So, I got a few of these and thought, let's have some fun. Yes, it's a vanity project, but it's there, and you heard it being played at the start, albeit not massively clear because it was played through my speakers captured on my camcorder instead of it being a direct digital capture but trust me they're as good as these i mean these i think they're the same tape i really do but uh, yeah type 4 metal i think the tape in this comes from samsung of all people reading what the guy that ran phoenix said it was samsung metal tape so how do you get hold of one of these well it's simple go to my website and it's the first picture on the carousel. Just just click it and I'll tell you why. Basically, I'm not charging anything for these. I'm giving them away free. How do you get one? Be a customer. If I like you, you'll get one. If you don't get one, doesn't mean I don't like it. It's just I've got people, since I put these up, you know, buying uh, three 89 pence Fuji DRs, sending notes saying, hope I get a metal cassette. If you think I'm going to send you a metal cassette, which really is worth around at least £15 for you spending £2.70, you need to get some realism in your life. So, yeah, there we go. A little promotional item, better than the uh, key rings I used to do. So, hope that's been an interesting video for you, a bit different. As always, please like and subscribe. And until next time, happy taping. Bye-bye.